we're going to think back to 9-1 real fast. You don't need to write this down. I'm just going to refresh your memory for a second. If I have this triangle, A, B, C, and I slide that over here to A prime, B prime, C prime, okay? Pretend those are the same size. That's terrible. Um, the way I named them, if you think about it, A, B, C is moving what direction when I'm naming it? A to B to C. For you guys, I guess it would be this way. What direction is that? Clockwise or counterclockwise? That's counterclockwise, right? The opposite of the direction the hands move on a clock. Counterclockwise. When we slide it to a new spot, and now it's A prime, B prime, C prime, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Counter so we say these have the same orientation. In other words, you name them the same way, right? A reflection does not. A reflection has what's called opposite orientation. Um, and let me show you what I mean by that. If I take this triangle and I reflect it over this line, okay, um, I'm going to fill in a blank down here for you. This is called the line of reflection. Okay. That's this line, the line of reflection. What happens is it's kind of like, imagine you have a physical piece of paper there. If you fold it on that line, the shape on the left would stamp onto the right side of the paper and be perfectly the same, right? So for instance, if I took this line right here and I reflected it, that would be this line right here, okay? If I took this line here and reflected it, it would be right here. And then this line and reflected it, it would be right there, okay? Now take a look at this. If I name this triangle H-O-G, what is this point down on the bottom of the other one? What? H prime, right? That's our new H. So that's H prime. Where is G prime? It's the exact same point as G, right? If it's on the line, it's the same point. Um, if you look down here, it says if point A is on the line, the image of A is A prime or itself, right? If a point is on the line of reflection, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays in that point, okay? Um, okay, so if you look up here, that makes this point O prime then. Now name that figure. If I call the first triangle HOG, what direction did I move? Clockwise. clockwise. This one's going clockwise. Okay, now if this was a slide, this next one would also be going clockwise. But this isn't a slide. This is a flip. When you flip it, if I now name it H prime, O prime, G prime, what happens? Now it's counterclockwise. Okay, so when they talk about orientation... They're saying, does it move in the same direction, both figures, or does one move the opposite direction of the other? So clockwise and counterclockwise, we say, is called opposite orientation. Okay, so reflections will always have opposite orientation. They will never have the same orientation. Now, if it reflects and reflects again, it would end up being the same, but that's actually called a rotation, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so just a couple fill in the blanks of the words. This is stuff I already told you. It says, notice that when you reflect a figure, the shapes have opposite orientation. Two figures have opposite orientations if the corresponding vertices, the vertices that match up with each other, of the pre-image and image read in opposite directions. Okay, in other words, one is clockwise and one is counterclockwise. Okay, so they will have opposite orientation if they read in opposite directions. Okay, um, so jumping down here, because I already told you about the line of reflection. If A is on the line, if a point is on the line, 
that point stays put. But if a point is not on the line, so like point H up here with point H prime, okay? Here's our line of reflection. What I want you to notice is if point, we'll say B, point H is not on the line, then M, the line of reflection, is the perpendicular bisector of the line. Okay, so if you look up here, basically what we're saying is this line of reflection, now it's purple, um, is going to be perpendicular to the line that goes through the points we're talking about. And these are gonna be equal lengths. So it's the same distance away from the line of reflection in both directions, okay? Um, this will make a lot more sense as we do them in just a minute, but just so you have all the details. Um, last thing, we're basically gonna say reflections are a rigid motion, um, meaning they preserve distance. This is the same stuff we talked about yesterday and they preserve angle measure. Okay, um, and when you flip something, that one point that you're flipping can only be one other point after it reflects. So um, that's what that last part is saying. But basically, this is all just saying a reflection is a rigid motion. In other words, your figures will be congruent, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, first of all, the rule for a reflection is always going to be a capital R followed by right here is going to be whatever line of reflection you have. And that can be written several different ways. And then of, for instance, triangle ABC would map onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime that type of thing. So just keep in mind, capital R, and then what line you're going to reflect over. Okay, so let's look at example one. It says point F has the coordinate 2, 6. What are the coordinates of, there's that R, Y equals 3, F, okay? I'm just going to write how you say this. You would say, a reflection over the line y equals 3 of point F. Okay, that's how this gets said. So if we're doing a reflection over the line y equals 3 of point F, the first thing you want to do is you just want to plot that point F. Okay, where do you move for the point 2, 6? Two units where? Right. To the right and six units up, okay? Um, if you're not clear on that, just ask me to sit down with you because if you graph wrong, you're gonna do everything wrong. You need to know how to graph. So if you're not clear on where points move for graphing, please talk to me. I would love to sit down with you, okay? Um, so two, six, you go two to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six up, is this point, which is point F. Okay, now we're reflecting over this line, Y equals three. Can anyone tell me what kind of line that is? It, oh, the first one, yes. It's horizontal, right? Y equals is a horizontal, not to be confused with the Y axis, right? The Y axis is vertical. Y equals is a horizontal line because our Y value is always three. So where Y equals three, my line of reflection is right here. Everyone get that? Y equals three is a horizontal line. And you maybe just in your notes wanna just write that. If it's Y equals, it's horizontal. If it's X equals, it's gonna be vertical. Um, but just keep in mind the y-axis is vertical, the x-axis is horizontal, okay? 
Okay, um, so here's how it works. If we're gonna reflect over that line, I need to do a perpendicular bisector setup, okay? So if you look at this, right now, this would be perpendicular, right? And I am one, two, three units above my line of reflection. So if I wanna reflect F over that line, where do you think I need to move? Think about folding the paper on that line. Where would your F prime land? Cool. Um, um, three, units down. three units down from the line, right. So if I'm at F, I'm three units above, I need to go one, two, three units below, and that will be my F prime. So F prime is gonna be the point two, zero. Does that make sense? So just think about folding the paper. Where would it stamp if I folded it? Why isn't it like the number from the top F? Like how are we at it? Like why isn't it seven down instead of? Because we're not reflecting over the axis, right? We're reflecting over this line. So think about folding the paper at that line. Where would the F match up? If it's three above, then we need to go three below. Okay. Questions on that? Okay, let's just say our line of reflection, this, don't write this down, but what if our line of reflection was x equals negative two? Where would you draw that? The left. Left two going vertically, right? X equals negative two would be this line. Okay, so just make sure you're clear on that. X equals negative two is a line like that y equals three is a horizontal line going through three, okay? Okay, so here's a wonderful example of what you're gonna have to do for me on a test, okay? I will give you a triangle and you have to draw that triangle and then graph the reflection of that triangle. So let's plot the triangle first, okay? Um, where do you move for negative four, three? left four, three up, okay? So negative four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So this point right here is X. And make sure you always label your points. Um, two, six is Y, so two to the right, six up. That puts you right here. And then Z is at negative one, so that's one to the left and eight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, if you fall off the graph, just add lines. It's no big deal. Just move it around. So this is Z, okay? Which means our triangle right now looks like this. Ooh, that wasn't good. I don't have the notability straight lines like you guys do. Bear with me. That's better. Okay, now look at the rule. The rule says do a what? A reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so where is your x-axis? The horizontal or the vertical? The horizontal. This is your x-axis. This is your y-axis. So we're reflecting over this line. Okay, um, often because there's points above it and there's points below it, people make mistakes on these. I'm gonna show you how to not make mistakes, okay? Don't try to reflect a triangle, just reflect one point at a time. So look at point X. If I'm at point X and it is one, two, three units above my line of reflection, where does my X prime go? Three below. You're going to go one, two, three, and this is your X prime. Okay. Now look at your Y. Where is Y in relationship to your line of reflection? Six, Six above. So where do you need to move? Six below your line. So if you are one, two, three, four, five, six above, 
go one, two, three, four, five, six below. We need to be perpendicular. So that's gonna be our Y prime, okay? Now look at your Z. Where are you in relationship to the line? Eight. You're eight below, so you need to go eight above, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight below puts us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight above. And that's our Z prime. So there's gonna be a lot of overlap here. Your triangle looks like this. And I don't need to see the little bubblies, the little bumps that I draw. Um, that's just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, if you wanna put them there, that's fine. But I need to see X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and then draw that triangle in, okay? Um, if it asks you where the coordinates are, you just name those coordinates. So X is at one, two, three, four, negative four, negative three. Um, y prime is at two, negative six. And Z prime is at negative two. Nope, negative one, sorry. Negative one, positive eight. Questions on that? Okay. Um, example three is now giving us the reflection and they want us to write the rule. So take a look at this. It says describe triangle two using a reflection rule. So what letter are we starting with to write our rule? What? To write the rule down. M is the line we're going to read. Oh, no, M is not the line we're reflecting over for two. R. It's a capital R, okay? The rule always starts with the, the letter of the transformation. We're doing a reflection, so capital R. And then what goes down here? The line that we reflect over, right? What line does triangle two reflect over? Okay, so you're going to say a reflection, I'm going to redo, of line K or over line K of triangle 2 should be what? What does 2 reflect to become? Triangle 4. Okay, so when they ask you for the rule, that would be your rule. Same thing if we were to do it for one um, triangle 1, we would say a reflection over what line? Line M of triangle one is what? Triangle three, okay? So capital letter and then the line you reflect over, those are the key things I need to see, okay? Questions on that? No. Yeah, cool. You can do the arrow. I do equal signs a lot. Equal arrow, I'll take either one of them. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that two and four are like the reflection things and one and three. Um, so if we folded at K, two would fall perfectly on four, right? If we folded at M, three would fall perfectly on one. Okay, okay I'm going to do one more um, reflection for you. You don't even have to write this down. I just want you to talk me through it. If you want to write it down, go ahead. I'm just going to erase all of this because I want you to see one more type of reflection with a different line. Um, let's say I give you a triangle. We're going to call this A and B and C. Okay, and we're going to reflect over the line y equals negative 1. Ah, uh, no, I lied. X, what did we do for the other one? We did the x-axis. Sorry, I want x equals negative 1. Okay, so if we're going to reflect over the line x equals negative 1, what kind of line is that? x equals is vertical, right? Um, so vertical at negative one is this line, okay? Where is a prime gonna end up? It's gonna be staying 
it's the same spot. If it is on your line of reflection, it stays put. So this is A prime, okay? Where is B prime going to move? Um, two to the left. Yeah, so right now B is two to the right of our line. So go two to the left, and that's B prime. And then C is one to the left, so we're going to go one to the right, and that's your C prime. So it'll look like this. Okay, don't worry about the overlap. Overlap is fine. Um, but just make sure if you're doing an X equals line, it's vertical. If you're doing a Y equals line, it's horizontal. Questions on that? 